Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go through an example of a repeated Prisoner's Dilemma game where the last period is uncertain. In this game we have two players, Firm 1 and Firm 2, who can set a low price or a high price. If both firms set a high price, they share a good profit of 5000 each, whereas if they both set the low price, they're each going to drive their profits down to 1000 if one sets the high price and the other sets the low price, whoever set the low price will undercut and take the entire market and get a profit of 8000 In the one-shot version of this, the Nash Equilibrium, of course, is low and low, where each get a profit of 1000 They would much rather get to the collusive outcome of high and high for an outcome of 5000 If the game is repeated, we can use the Grim Trigger strategies to potentially support a cooperative outcome between the two firms. If both firms are playing the Grim Trigger strategy, then they're going to start out by setting the high price, and they're going to continue setting the high price as long as the other player also did. If both play Grim Trigger, then they'll continue to do that, until the game ends. I'm going to use a capital pi to represent the expected total payoffs for either firm. Pi collude will be our Grim Trigger payoff, where we're going to end up setting the high price until the game ends. Initially, both players set the high price, get 5000 In the next period, they're going to continue doing that and get another 5000 but only if they actually make it to that point. The game will end with a probability of theta, so the probability of getting to this next round is 1 minus theta. In the round after that, they'll continue to cooperate, get another 5000 but now the probability of getting there is only 1 minus theta squared, and this will go on like this until the game ends. Note that since 1 minus theta is a number between 0 and 1, the higher the exponents, the lower it gets. That is, the lower the chance the game will last to that period. Since the probability of getting to these later and later periods is lower and lower and lower, our firms are going to weight those payoffs accordingly. Based on the formula for a geometric series, this is going to come out to 5000 over theta. Next, we need to figure out what is the expected payoff for defecting. Suppose that Firm 2 is playing the Grim Trigger strategy, but Firm 1 wants to defect. Firm 2 will be setting the high price in the first round. Firm 1 will defect by setting the low price, which will land us in this outcome right here, where Firm 1 makes an instant payoff of 8000 According to the Grim Trigger strategy, if the other player ever defects from the high price, then set the low price forever, that's going to land us in this corner right here, which of course is our Nash Equilibrium in the one-shot game. If the game lasts for the next period, then the defecting firm is going to make a payoff of 1,000 with a probability of 1 minus theta. Same thing for the next period as well if we ever make it there, which happens with a probability of 1 minus theta squared, and so on beyond that. This is also a geometric series, and using the formula we get 8000 plus 1000 times 1 minus theta over theta. We can now compare these two expected values, and if the value for defecting is greater than that for colluding, then collusion is not going to be possible. I'm going to write out the inequality here. Collusion can be sustained with Grim Trigger if the value for colluding is greater than or equal to the value for defecting. Based on the calculations we just did, we've got 5000 over theta greater than or equal to 8000 plus 1000 times 1 minus theta over theta. We'll do some algebra and multiply both sides by theta we get 5,000 greater than or equal to 8,000 theta plus 1,000 times 1 minus theta. I'm going to distribute to get 8,000 theta plus 1,000 minus 1,000 theta. Collect terms, we get 4,000 greater than or equal to 7,000 theta divide both sides by 7,000, we get theta less than or equal to 4 sevenths. It's only possible to collude if the chance of the game ending is less than 4 in 7, which is about 57%. 
The interpretation here is that if the probability of the game ending any given period is greater than 4 out of 7, then getting that instant payoff of 8,000 is worth a lot relative to the steady stream of 5,000 every period, because on average that's not going to last very long. Whereas if the probability of the game ending is relatively low, then getting 5,000 for a few periods is going to be better than the instant payoff of 8,000. Another way to say this would be that the probability of the game continuing each period needs to be greater than 3 out of 7, or about 43%. That's how we analyze a repeated Prisoner's Dilemma style game with an uncertain final period. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.